Welcome everyone, Grand Gnosis Master, Dr. Thor Templar here with another fascinating book review. Um, and I always love to get books uh, like this one because they're, excuse me, written by individuals who've been involved in magical practices and have trained themselves and they give you their own personal little systems, what works for them, etc. They may not be the most cohesive or written well, but those written well magical books you get published by a lot of the crap publishers like Llewellyn uh, generally tend to be a very low level. And they're edited to death um, and produced by um, people who really don't know what uh, magic is all about. Um, this is an individual who's put his uh, magical system together, makes a whole bunch of claims like everybody does. The name of the book is... Templar Knighthood, Psychic Warfare 101, Combating Terror with Egyptian Magic by Izu Nazareth, or looks like Jesus Nazareth. Um, it's interesting here, and uh, he's got a few books that seem to be based in Egyptian magic. I'm not really sure um, of this particular author's background. There's a little bit of information on him. Apparently he lives in California. Um, he's very heavily connected to Egyptian magic, so this is really a very poorly worded um, book uh, to grab your attention here. I'm assuming he put out a book on Egyptian magic and it didn't sell, so he renamed it to grab people's attention. Apparently it's been under several different names uh, to increase sales. Well, that's typical salesmanship, etc., um, you know, everybody does this. It is very misleading. There's absolutely nothing in this book that has to do with the Knights Templar and very little to do with psychic warfare, even though there are chapters, information, spells, etc. on uh, stopping attacks um, and countering attacking uh, those that are attacking you. This is a minor aspect of the book because the book goes into absolutely every area of life that you could need help in. Uh, which is very interesting because this is rarely um, um, seen in the books that I've ever seen. I mean, they have uh, attraction um, spells and incantations to attract wine and cheese, to attract fruits, to attract gold and silver, to attract a well-paying job, to attract antiques, to attract love, um, to attract employment and benefits to attract entitlements, welfares, pensions. Um, so it goes on and on to every possible kind of situation you may have in life um, that um, you would um, need a particular spell for. So this is a whole book, uh, and it takes a lot of the... Um, it doesn't go into the gods and goddesses and all those things and a lot of filler history, which tend to be boring. But the author does get right into giving you um, actual uh, mantras and um, basic spell statements, which is what a spell is basically all about. You're stating your purpose there and calling upon a particular god form without going into a lot of details of that god form. Um, so he does give you that. Um, he gives you some Egyptian chants as well. It's kind of broken up into spells that give you um, hailing the gods and calling on them with the actual, which is what's nice here, he gives you the magical hieroglyphics that go with that particular chant, which means you can use those hieroglyphics uh, for whatever purpose it is. Uh, here's some to cure illness, um, to heal vision, other things. And he gives you not only the chance of the specific God that handles that kind of energy, but he gives you the hieroglyphics uh, that you can use. Now, I'm, as anyone who is a Gil follower knows, uh, we are heavily into symbols and sigils and so forth. This is the universal life um, um, empowerment. Everything comes down to sigils. We all convert everything down to what is considered some sort of pictographic image. Um, so no matter what you call something in your language, it comes down ultimately to you seeing the image or whatever that is. 
uh, even if it's something less uh, straightforward like a bird or a rock it could be even an emotion and you visualize whatever that is in your life or when you felt like that or person you saw uh, in a certain state you still are converting that over to an image so uh, using hieroglyphics can be very powerful and here again when you use ancient systems there is a certain residual energy in them because people have used these for years and years uh, and they continue to be used so there is a power involved in that that uh, you get from using systems that are established instead of some goofball chaos system where you pray to Mickey Mouse so um, there is energy involved here and important energies and um, all you'd really have to do here is you can uh, scan it uh, I'm assuming everybody has scanners now you can copy it um, if you want to do that and um, cut out these hieroglyphics put them under candles wrap them around candles uh, put them on your altars uh, put them in your Triforce system um, or other systems um, and this is just another way to send those particular energies that tend to work very well in manifesting when you break them down into a symbolic language so um, I mean it goes into absolutely everything here in terms of um, uh, what is covered here? Stomach pain. Stop the effects of hypnosis. How's that one for an obscure chant to a god with the hieroglyphics there? To acquire amulets and talisman of protection. To dispel and cleanse all foreign magic except for the magic uh, conducted by yourself. So, I mean, um, this is really a very thorough book going into this. Uh, he talks about rewarding the gods, leaving them things, which is, you know, one of those very overlooked things in ritual magic is not leaving um, thank yous to the god forms. Now, in traditional Western magic, because you're commanding spirits, like is stated in the Red Dragon, the art of commanding spirits, the grand grimoise it's often called, is that you're commanding lower level spirits who generally don't want to help you unless you threaten them. Now, this doesn't uh, portray, because you're using fallen angels and other ones, that's pretty much the proper code of conduct. When you start contacting other forms, particularly God forms, uh, you're not going to tell them what to do directly. How oh, you, God, do what I tell you. That, the absurdity of that is... Uh, is, is uh, a little bit ridiculous. But so you have to understand that when you're calling on spirits, you want to be friendly and you want to offer them something. This is a common trait throughout the world. I mean, almost every society says to welcome visitors, give them uh, food and drink. This is how things were expected to, to be friendly to them, welcome them. Um, so, um, this is how you would contact spirits. You generally positive spirits, you invoke, you actually bring the energy into you personally in a semi-possession way. Evoking is when you're drawing a spirit to you that you're going to command. And this is uh, a very important understanding in magic that people don't seem to understand. You evoke uh, quasi-dangerous uh, spirits, gray spirits, or spirits that will only obey you because you commanded them under threat, um, which is very typical of Western grimoire magic. Uh, so, But when you go into other forms of magic, you are asking the spirit, the god form, to help you, and you want to reward them uh, with drinks and food and smoke, etc. This is, goes around the world. I mean, this is very typical in the hoodoo voodoo tradition that people leave whiskey, cigars, and other things for the different god. Well, you're giving gifts to a large extent uh, when animals are sacrificed to, uh, in most positive cultures, those animals are then eaten. Um, but you're giving a gift of food and this is very important to more primitive societies that had to trouble eating. So he talks about that, and that's something that's uh, very interesting and um, um, exciting. But he has uh, things for those gamblers out there. He's got lots of things involved with gambling, uh, lotto, and so forth, which we're going to be testing out in our um, uh, gambling club. So... 
the um, this book, which is a pretty big book, I guess it's 230 pages, is filled with practical information and not much gobbledygook and the things that uh, tend to be just filler. You know, so many books are 10 pages of uh, practical information and 190 pages of filler. This is pretty much the opposite. For the practical magician, particularly uh, someone who has a little knowledge, but I mean, as I've stated, you can pretty much go out and just uh, copy these, scan them, print them out, and then use them uh, on your um, altars, under candles, uh, psychic uh, connections to them. You can use the different mantras. He has all the Egyptian, um, he also has a lot of Egyptian mantras. Um, that he gives you, I mean, there's, uh, wow, must be almost 200 Egyptian mantras he gives you for very specific, uh, which you could chant over and over again if you're not a person who likes altars or candles or other things, uh, while looking at the hieroglyphics, a very simple way to do very powerful spell casting and visualization um, without having to go through a lot of rigmarole, which people got too caught up in the past because it made them special because they had altars and did things other people didn't know. But this person goes into that. Apparently, uh, he is uh, involved in many, um, uh, heavily involved in everything Egyptian, and has several other books, which I don't have at, the, at this point. Um, but uh, I plan on getting in the future. Uh, it's hard to find practical Egyptian stuff that isn't uh, polluted with so much um, nonsense. There seems to be another book. Uh, he seems to call himself Horus Michael, Egyptian Counter Magic. That looks like an interesting book. Um, there's another one on a Egyptian a government ran by a democratic uh, monarchy. Interesting. These are all Kindle books. You can get them on um, Amazon. And um, Sekhmet's Effective Egyptian Magic Spells Revised Edition. They're all about $10, and it's uh, Horace Michael. You can check that out here uh, with those books as well. So if you're into Egyptian magic, this is going to be heaven for you. Uh, if you're a practical magician, you can spend a lot of time going through here, copying things out. And there's, as I said, there's such obscure things um, that uh, I'm anxious to try to see how well they empower things like the lottery, gambling. Um, these are the types of things that um, um, earning points in the stock market... Um, you know, these are the type of things that um, he has uh, brought down to modern times, which is always um, fun to uh, see and experiment with. Finding money on the ground to attract wealth, um, which is very interesting. You know, this is a great way of people who have no sources or channels to come to them, is that you'll actually find money on the ground. I've heard this from many people. I've done this not on the ground, but, you know, um, I've done wealth rituals and put on an old jacket and found $50 in my pocket. I never even knew that was there. Now, whether that materialized there or was waiting to be found again, well, who knows? Winning in games of chance, winning interstate lottery, um, how to get donations, uh, I mean, all these things are quite uh, exciting and fascinating, and anytime we can find something that we can practically apply. Now, you've got to be serious about this. Follow basic traditional methods of doing things. Know what you're doing. Um, again, as with all systems, if you expect them to work, you should know the foundations laid out by the guild. You should be doing the centering practices as noted in the book. You should understand what is manifesting. And the book I've written, uh, What Can I Manifest, is a critical guide that is information that people don't think about. Uh, how to make things manifest for you. And of course, doing occult gym exercises, building your innate abilities that are uh, dormant in your reality, uh, takes up some pumping of mental iron. 
So you really have to do that if you expect to be successful. If you just take stuff out of a book like this and do chants and so forth, well, I guess if you repeat it enough, use a few candles and you can uh, get into a semi-trance state, the keys to manifesting, uh, you will get something out of it. But there are foundations that are easy to learn, but you should learn. Now, he doesn't talk about all that in here, but the point is, is that's what is really critical. And that's what will... Uh, make things manifest in your life and everybody can manifest in their life if they follow simple procedures but if you just throw stuff into the wind your level of manifestation will be little to none so i recommend this book check our links below to go to the website and find out where you can purchase it make sure to uh, join this particular channel the more people that participate the more new information we produce